The dwarves have received an absolutely insane rework. You can now teleport instantly across the map with the new underway network. Ironbreakers now have a formation that quite literally lets them avoid taking damage by artillery, all because of a new formation that gives them the ballistic plating within it that reflects artillery damage. Getting access to a really OP free army super early on, a big rework of all the traits that they previously had, the ability to deploy an extremely powerful army in very quick succession due to the Grudge Settlers, a new book of Grudges that provides extremely powerful effects, alongside being able to confederate any of the relative lords super easily, and as you can see, these are all the Grudge Settler units. Jarra Bombers are now 4 entities instead of 1, and Jarra Copters are now 12 instead of 4, making them a force to be reckoned with. There's been honestly an insane amount of changes, but to break it down, this is the new Age of Reckoning, which is the new Grudge system. As we can see that we have a total Grudges progression. So we need 100% of that 13,300. The number will vary depending on the turn and how many Age of Reckonings you've done. But as you can see, we have relative debuffs. So if you only obtain 0 to 24% of the number that it needs, which is the 13,300, then you get debuffs instead of any kinds of buffs. If you get between the 25 to 49%, we'll obtain Quarrelers, Slayers, to the Grudge Settler Mercenaries, which is obviously, as we know, if I just find an army real quick over here, this is all in the mercenary pool here. And you can see as well that if we go into the 50 to 74%, you get access into a little bit stronger units, and the same to 75% uh, to basically 100%. And all you need to make sure you're doing is fighting armies that have incurred grudges against you. So basically, anytime they're shaming the Lancasters, make sure you kill them. And you'll always see the grudges incurred above their heads. So I've seen the amount of grudges you obtain from a certain battle. It scales depending on how evil they are towards you. For example, if I go over to Wurzeg over here, you can see that I have 882 over here. And there's certain settlements that will give me significantly more. For example, the pesky Skaven Bite, 1077, which makes perfect sense. You have 10 turns to do the Age of Reckoning, and you've got to make sure that you... Basically, settle as many grudges as you possibly can do. Keep in mind as well that obviously the quest battles in question will give you uh, settled grudges at the same time. So in the early game, it's paramount that you ensure that you are utilizing the quest battles to obtain the highest percentage of the Age of Reckoning you can do because you get an insanely powerful army as we've demonstrated for free and it's well worth doing because it'll help you snowball significantly. And within the Great Book of Grudges, we can see that these are the Grudge Settler units. Uh, so to give it a really quick TLDR, we can see they're specializing in killing inventory because of the fact that we get bonus damage to the range alongside shield breaker. We get sundering attacks and we have extremely daring death blow, which is a little bit better. We have the monstrous impacts, which has a huge AOE. We also have the guardian and expert charge defense on the longbeards. Hammerers get frenzy and frostbite attacks. Iron drakes have significantly increased range alongside having flammable attacks. So once one of them out of the 28 hits, the rest of them will do 20% more damage. Gyrocopters are very similar to the likes of the previous Gyrocopter Brimstone guns, and they do a lot of damage as part of the 12 entities that exist. And we can see that the field gun of the Flame Cannons have a ton of armor and have shrapnel projectiles. Next up, the Great Book of Grudges has a rework towards it. Now we have Legendary Grudges that gives us relative bonuses. So here within the legendary grudges, the very first one is restoring the underway network, which we've seen. So if you just zoom out, you can basically teleport to any of these uh, underway network instantly, as long as an army is in the underway location. Further to this, we also have the uh, unlocking a landmark building within Val's Anvil, which as you see is the Halls of Dragon, where we can get a random ancillary every five turns. We also have a grudge that gives us a ton of oath gold alongside the settled grudges. So if you can tie in doing the legendary grudges alongside the age of reckoning you'll be very much set up for success there we also have call the miners so if this if the clan molder so throt and ikit dies and we have a dwarf faction within skaven blight and help it we get call the miners which allows us to summon in some miners we also have legendary grudges so this will uh, unlock the network to uz kolak and Karakazon, which is the guys over all the way to the right, blocking this side of the map, so we can teleport all the way to the east, giving us further access and further ability to teleport quite far. So next up we have the landmark building in the Oak of Ages, so if we go have a little look over towards the Oak of Ages, what that'll give us is the ability to chop down quite a lot of trees. Now, but a big old tree, I say. And as the Dowie would be, and say that indeed, absolutely. 
So get a lot more base weapon damage, with uh, base, base missile damage for the quarrelers and rangers, and a lot of timber, which will pull in a lot of money. It'll be about 800 per turn. It's not crazy, but it definitely certainly helps. Next up, a really, really easy way to confederate the legendary lords. And if they're dead, they will actually come back to life when you confederate them. There is a cooldown of five turns. And in actual fact, it's quite easy to get confederations of these guys because you need to get a reasonable chunk of settled grudges. So if you confederate one of them, you'll need quite a lot more to confederate them. But as you see, I'm very close to getting the secondary legendary lord recruited. Uh, so it is very, very nice that you can get a lot of the new Dwarven Legendary Lords in a relatively quick manner. Next up, the grudge is to own this settlement to unlock a reduction of the underway network travel time because it does take a bit of time to cool down. Alongside this one, we also have a unique Dwarf Lord, which is added to your recruitment pool. I'm not going to show that one because I want it to be a nice surprise for you guys. And we have uh, another one here where we just need to make sure that we've murdered Clan Moors because we can allow ourselves to add plus two Grudge Settlers in the army, bumping it up from five to seven. And we also have the Unlock the Landmark building in Silver Pinnacle, which we actually have built, um, and we'll just demonstrate it over here. So if we jump over here, you can see that we've got the sealed tombs, and we can also get ourselves to the reclaimed home, but looks like the undead are going to stop us and do everything they can to murder us to stop purging them away. I just want to talk about some of the great quality of life changes that have happened, and that includes the Dwarf Warriors are now at a tier 0, which means on any settlement you take, you can actually recruit Dwarf Warriors, which is a big, big change. We also have Oath Gold as a... Uh, resource generation within the buildings so you can either make the trinket makers or you can trade the use the traders guild hall uh, as we know there's all the tier two uh, heroes so instead of having to go to tier three to get your heroes you can get them very very quickly so you can get them to the point where they're leveled up and really useful uh, a lot of the buildings have been shifted and changed around to ensure that you can get a lot more powerful units earlier on for example we get gyrocopters at tier two and we have iron drakes at tier two as well so very, very potent units in the early stages of the game, uh, alongside obviously getting the Quarrelers still. So really nice to see that you can get so many new options as to what you need to fight against, you know, gyrocopters against folks that don't have any range. And we also have obviously, you know, the traditional route going down Iron Drake. So, but very much a big improvement. We can see also that we no longer get Gotrin Felix from the Refectory. Instead, you have a quest battle that unlocks at level 15 to unlock them as legendary heroes, which makes them a permanent addition to your roster. And I believe Gotrick has replenishment for your army. So massive win there. And another one is definitely the tech tree being separated out into different types so we have the economy and construction capabilities through the guild which is giving us variants of bonuses that allows us to ensure that we're getting the best out of our campaign at that specific point so if we're looking for a bonus to our objectives and bonus to our economy and the settlements in question this is the way to do it and we know that we're using uh, quite a good chunk of oath gold so it's really important to get a sustainable uh, amount coming through the door but we can see that you need to just like it was for like nurgle and things like that we have a certain amount of tech until we can go into the next tree so you just to make sure to go through all of these where you can i'm not going to go through most of them but the main fundamentals is we're getting the massive amounts of bonuses the biggest one is honestly the interlocking shields which gives us shield wall and as we talked about at the very beginning of this one, this one is the Shield Wall of Gromil for the Ironbreakers that allows you to basically avoid taking any damage from uh, the artillery pieces. So there's a chance that you can just completely negate the damage, which is kind of insane. So now you can be very, uh, you can be a lot more productive and bespoke with what you're looking for as a tech tree is set up to allow you to do that. Next up, the Forge and all the changes that come with the Forge. So one of the biggest things is the Oath Gold requirements have increased significantly. And the main thing is that some of the resources required have changed. So for example, with the Iron Warden's Tankard, you now need Dwarf Beer instead of Pottery, which is pretty damn huge because of the fact that previously it was actually quite difficult to obtain Pottery to get the liquid fortification of the Tankard. Although it has been nerfed, so there's less melee defense, so there's another 5 melee defense anymore. And it does cost 500 Oath Gold. But in truth, it doesn't take too long to get a Oath Gold generation going. As, as we saw, we can get it through the buildings. And in general, a lot of the Forge still has, you know, the majority of the really good stuff that was in there. But mainly, we just don't have the resources requirements for it. They've kind of shifted around and they're a lot more obtainable for most of the Dwarven factions. 
So depending on the items that you're looking for, you'll have a much easier time getting them. But I must admit, the rune changes have made it a lot harder to get, you know, very, very potent runes. For example, 500 Oath Gold in the early game actually takes a reasonable amount of time. Whereas before you could get the runes, Rune of Spite like turn three if you really tried, like by like routing from battles and then sacking settlements. Uh, but now it takes a reasonable amount of turns until you can start getting the Oath Gold. For the first time in a long time when I was playing as Thorgrim here, uh, by attacking Skarsnik, I actually gained the Rune of Spite by attacking Skarsnik instead of, you know, doing the traditional way of getting it through 50 Oath Gold. So, you can still recycle items as well, but I believe the infinite gold cheese has gone. As you can see, the Oath Gold requirements of the two... Um, Cleathers here is 60 replenishment of the recycle, so you can no longer cheese infinite oath gold, which in some ways is a bit of a shame, but completely understandable that it wasn't really healthy for the game. Now let's talk about the lords. They've had a overhaul regarding the traits, so there's a lot more really good traits in there, and a lot of their skills have also been changed. So if we look at the new stuff, we can see that we have access into Invoke Runes of Grimnir with the Rune Lord. One of the biggest problems that the Rune Lords had is that they were just nowhere near the same level as a, uh, you know, the Dwarf Lord normally. The, they could absolutely crush stuff, and so this is making them a little bit more competitive. We also have the Invoke Runes of Grungi, which is really insane. 10 armor and physical resistance at level 8. So very early on, you're going to get a lot more tanky stats for them. And we got the Invoke Runes of Valaya, which is Casualty Replenishment alongside Vigor Loss Reduction. And fundamentally, you know, you've got the Armor of Doom, you've got all of the uh relative ways of making yourself more tanky and we also have the passive of ancient law there but the main factor when it comes to the the runes themselves uh they haven't really changed all too much i think the main ones is that a lot of the lords have now you know a lot more new things that make them a little bit more potent regarding either making your army stronger or making them stronger and speaking of making them stronger we can see that we have on the Dwarf Lord here, this is the generic one, we've got melee defense of plus 5 and an AoE. We also have the Mastercrafted Weapons and the Rune Warden Armor. And we also have the Prestigious Descendant, Lords in Waiting, so we get some Recruit Rank and Physical Resistance for the units here. Ear of the Council, so Recruitment Capacity. We also have Grudges to Shuttle, which is Movement Range and Casualty Replenishment, and also Hack and Slash. So honestly, the Dwarf, these Lords, this Lord specifically, is honestly pretty damn good. I think you're going to get into a position where you can get a lot of your units very, very strong, very, very quickly. And I am a big fan of them, if I'm honest. So really good changes there. Adding a lot more of a oomph to the previously relatively boring lords. Now let's tackle the changes for the Thane. We've got Fell-Handed Warrior. We've got Unfaltering, which gives us some hit points. Dowie Authority inherited arms and we've got the revered thane which gives an aoe of a minus five attack so we still have the same old same old for this tree but definitely a nice upgrade on this tree up here making thanes a absolute force to be reckoned with and in relation to the master engineer for the free lc specifically there is no changes as far as i'm aware and for the likes of the runesmith we do have the uh, kind of this area, uh, a couple of changes here, but fundamentally not a lot of differences for the heroes in regards to the free LC. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something and keep in mind, I use a mod to basically make this video a lot easier to make so I can showcase a lot more things, but I try to make, do my very best to condense it as much as possible because your time is valuable and I really appreciate that. So thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and make sure to check out the video on screen. It's me streaming the Dwarves live.